Outside the Box Reviews, we are taking a look at the NECA cult classics, Rob Zombie's Halloween, Michael Myers. Now, I've already reviewed this figure, but the version I reviewed was the cult classics icons version, the stripped down, pared down version of this figure, which I was quite happy with. It's a nice piece to have in the collection to represent that version of Michael Myers. However, I always wanted this version, the original version that comes with a display base, an alternate head, and a second knife. It's one of the two really awesome older NECA figures that were sitting on the shelves of my local FYE back in the day and simply collecting dust. I never picked them up. And then when I finally made that decision to go get them, somebody beat me to the punch. But luckily I was able to pick this one up used to finally add to my collection. The display base this figure comes with is exactly what you'd expect out of a Michael Myers figure. It has a great fall ground base here at the bottom. See the two footprints from Michael Myers with the pegs coming out of it, but just a bunch of grass and leaves and dead foliage. We have some branches coming out in sections. I'm not even sure what these are back here. They almost look like sharpened sticks or something, which is really cool. Nothing on the bottom, of course. And then we do have the large Judith Myers tombstone, which is awesome. It has a great stone texture to it. It's molded into gray plastic and given a gray dry brushing to bring out all the cracks and details. You have the roses sculpted on the bottom there. Got Myers up here inside the cross itself. It's got detail on the side as well, but if you turn around to the back, there is no more detail. You can kind of see it comes apart. You can put it in different pieces and plug it into the base for easy storage. Michael also comes with two knives. He has this one here, which I don't remember exactly where it was in the movie, but I think it was earlier on. But it has a really nice sharp blade shape. You see the kind of step down section up here at the top of the knife, the sharp edge at the bottom, nice blood splatter on it, and the handle's kind of made out of an antler or something like that, giving it a really cool look. The other knife is the same version we got with the Icons version, which looks nice. Standard butcher knife for Michael. It's a very bloody blade. The blood's even so dark that it turned black here at the tip, which is kind of crazy looking. Nice sharp blade look. Got the rivets there on the handle, which is a nice attention to detail, and even the metal going through the handle itself. The standard head sculpt on this figure, I like well enough. It's got some good cracks going through it. His eyes always have bugged me being bright blue instead of the darkest eyes, you know, the devil's eyes. But it overall looks pretty good. There's some good paint shading there on the mask itself. I feel like it's a little bit off, a little less extreme than the actual version seen in the movie, but it's all right. The hair is well done as well, swept back, some good paint shading on that too. Then we can even see the seam at the back of the mask, which is movie accurate. But the look I really wanted to get with this figure, the reason I hunted down this version of it, is the escape mask, which looks really cool. It has that cardboard paper mache look to it. His eyes do look quite a bit darker here, which I definitely appreciate, but overall it's really nice. There's some lighter yellowy paint shading over the orange to kind of give it a look that it's worn off a bit. Then we have his long Long, heavy metal hair sticking out every direction because Rob Zombie has to make every character long haired. We have some good shading in here. It's a dark brown base with lighter browns over top to really bring out all the detail. You can even see the strap of the mask going around behind everything. And they layered some pieces of hair over it, which I like. Then you have these rubberized strands up here in his face, which are really a nice touch as well. Going further there on the body, they did a pretty good job on the neck there. You can even see some chest hair poking out the top of his shirt, a little bit of his gray undershirt. We have the big heavy collar on there with the deep red to it. Some nice weathering on his jumpsuit here. I feel like this version is a little shinier and a little darker than the Icons version. That's minor detail, but it's still there. See, he has the patches and the pockets in here, the seam covering up the zipper and the buttons. More blood splatter there on his pants. Detail continues onto the sleeve. We got a nice seam going down it on both sides. We have his patch up here on his left shoulder. His left hand is open and very, very bloody. His right hand is also equally bloody and sculpted to hold the knife. Going on the back, more of the same detail, all the same stitching and seams that are movie accurate for the suit. We have the little loop here on the side, the pockets in the back more great wrinkles. Then we come down to the snaps going down the side of the leg that open at the bottom. Got a hole there in his knee. And then we have some very, very dirty looking work boots underneath, which are very nicely done. For articulation, I'm actually going to pull up the Icons version just because it's the exact same articulation. And this one is nice and broken in. And this regular release version is pretty stiff. But he has a ball joint at the base of the neck. You look pretty far up and down as well as side to side. 
You really don't lose any of that articulation with the alternate head. It looks up and down really easily side to side as well. He does brush a bit on his shoulders with his long hair, so I would be careful to avoid paint scuffage. We get the old school neck of shoulders. They'll go forward back out to the side, but the joint always has felt a little bit fragile. We have a cut joint at both elbows, so you can swivel at kind of a slight angle to allow you to rotate the arm to fit in different positions. We also have a rotation at the wrist, slightly hindered by the sculpt of the sleeve. Nothing through the rest of the body down to the legs. Then we do get a bit of rotation there at the feet. And for a size comparison, here's the two versions of this Michael Myers with the Mezco Halloween 2 Michael Myers in the middle. And I really do like the height of this figure, even though we're comparing it to another Michael, but he has a very nice height to him. I think it works really well for the character it's supposed to be. Myers and Rob Zombie's version is Tyler Mayne. He's a big freaking huge guy. So he definitely needs to be as big as a lot of the other big killers like Jason and things like that. And I'm very, very happy I got this version of the figure. The plus side is that I don't really feel like I have a repeat of a figure because I can keep this one in the escape version mask and keep my old one in the normal mask, the classic mask or the scarred mask, however you want to name it. There's minor paint differences between these two figures, but nothing major enough that I would say you need to have both if you're only looking for one version of Myers. And with the fact that you're going to be paying inflated costs to get either of these, I would definitely go for the original release if you can get your hands on it. I feel like the price on this guy has started to drop a little bit recently. I've seen them in the ballpark of around 40 bucks, which for an older NECA figure isn't too shabby. I don't know what the Icons version is going for, but with the extra display base and head and knife, I really, really prefer the original release, and I wish I would have gotten it back when it was at normal retail price. So this figure does get a recommend from me, and it really makes me hope that somehow, eventually, NECA will work one of their great miracles and come to an agreement with the Akkads to get the rights back to do Michael Myers figures, because damn, we need some new, better articulated figures. I know they most likely would concentrate on the 78, but I would love to see them do what they did with Freddy and just crank out a bunch from a bunch of different movies. The two Rob Zombie movies, Halloween 2 with the Blood Tears, heck, even Halloween Halloween 4 with an alternate bandaged head would be badass. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, username Outside the Box Reviews. Also check me out on Facebook, link below. And until next time, this has been the Outside the Box Reviews. Stay tuned for more to come.